Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. Now, it's not often that I get to circle back to a game and its developer that landed themselves on the dirty devs list and be willing to provide a follow-up video discussing how that developer has taken actions to correct the mistakes of the past. It's rare to see an indie dev that winds up on that list behave in a rational manner, be accepting of the critique provided, and actually amend their actions, and it's because of those very reasons that I wanted to discuss Hell of Men Blood Brothers. Before I do though, and because I haven't been able to produce a video at all this week, I do have a weekly sponsorship spot to go through, and I do apologize I haven't had a chance to record a new one yet, so bear with me. I'll be getting that done this weekend for future videos. Yes, that's right, I went and got a sponsor, because YouTube ad revenue is beyond garbage right now. Of course, I don't want to promote any sort of mobile game or any of that nonsense, so I chose to go with Raid, <clears throat> I mean, Ridge Wallet. Now, these guys sent me my own Ridge Wallet, which I chose the Carbon Fiber Wallet because I'm a big fan of uniform branding, and I like it far more than I originally thought I would. Now, the Ridge Wallet is small, yet effective, with a sleek design that holds up to 12 cards plus room for your cash that can also easily fit in your front pocket. Now, there are over 30 colors to choose from, plus they also sell phone cases, bags, and even a knife. And the Ridge team are so confident that you'll like these wallets, they're willing to allow you to test drive them for 45 days, which, if you don't love the wallet, it, simply send it back for a full refund. So get your Ridge wallet today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash SIDALPHA and use the code SIDALPHA for 10% off your order. Link is in the description below. Now, in November of 2019, I released the video Dirty Devs Hell of Men Blood Brothers by Wacky Squad Studio Censorship. Within that video, I discussed how the YouTuber Dad's Gaming Addiction had been provided a review code for this game and had offered up a review that was, as I put it, far more forgiving than I would have been. The review itself was still ultimately negative though, and when Dad's Gaming Addiction had published his review to the Steam storefront for Hell of Men, the developer had removed it for fear of it damaging the potential sales of his game. Now, it's important to note that this was not a user review. Game developers do not have the capacity to remove standard user reviews by design, as the potential for censorship and negative critique would simply be too great. What this was, was a video being posted to the storefront's community hub, which the developers and publishers that control those store pages are afforded full control of those, and they do have the ability to remove them. A reason being, you wouldn't want some random person posting porn videos or some such to your game's store page without having the ability to rapidly remove it. Now, in response to that community hub post, the developer said the following, You are lowering our product while it is in early access. We offer it to you so that you can make it known and encourage people to get involved in development by helping us and thus create a community. This is not the case here. Many updates are planned, the multiplayer mode, the option menu, which should arrive soon. We are open to questions. It is sometimes nice to meet the developers to know the future of the game. We are available on our Discord, Mail, and Steam Hub. Now, I did take care to point out within my video that this is not what a critic's job is. A critic's job is to provide information and their own impressions of the game, its features, aesthetics, controls, and as many of its elements as they deem to cover in order to allow gamers to be able to make a better and more informed decision on whether or not they would like to play the game themselves. It is not in any way, nor should it be, the critic's job to become an extension of the game developer's will or desires in order to promote the game. If the review is positive, it can certainly have that effect to be sure, but that determination is entirely up to the critic, and providing a review code does not make that critic beholden to the developer. And for the developer to hold that expectation of the critic is something that seems ill-considered and ill-advised, to say the very least. Also, within my first video, I pointed out the $12 price point for the game. The reason I did so was because depending on the price tag attached to a game, it carries with it certain expectations. For some, it's hours of playtime, the general rule of thumb that you would have one hour of playtime per one dollar of cost. And while everyone is and should be free to make their own determination in that regard, that is a measurement of value that I don't at all agree with. Reason being is because it can push the developers to pad their games with useless and meaningless filler, detracting from the overall quality of the game in order to make sure they hit some imaginary valuation of play time. Now, I would rather a $20 game only have a dozen or fewer hours of playtime if it means that what playtime is present would be tighter, more polished, and ultimately more worthwhile. 
And the same goes with a full AAA game. I don't expect a game of that type to have between 60 and 200 hours of playtime if all it means is an interminable grind in order to continue to progress. However, your expectations for a $12 game in terms of quality would be much higher than they would be for, say, a $5 title. For instance, and I had pointed out that at this price range, it entered this game into competing with other games at a similar price point within the RTS genre such as 8-Bit Armies, a game series that I really enjoyed playing that had a fantastic fourth wall breaking story that made fun of not only the RTS games of the past, but also of themselves, and those games were polished and enjoyable to play. Meanwhile, this game by comparison was extremely basic, very early on in its development, and as such, I didn't feel that it was meeting the expectations that such a price tag brought with it. As a result of that first Dirty Devs video, the developer reached out to me directly via Discord, and we did have a very long discussion where I will freely admit I was blunt, I was cold, and sometimes I was a bit rude. However, I did offer him a great deal of advice, seeing as the developer was open to hear that. And as a result of that, he did agree to lower the price of his game, as I had suggested that the price point be set at $5, and I very much got the impression that while he did admit to the reasoning behind the censoring of Dad's Gaming Addictions review as a way of protecting his sales, he understood why his doing that was not a good thing. I had also recommended to him that he issue a public apology, which he did the following day, and that apology reads, Hello everyone, following this Sid Alpha video, I owe you an explanation. When I released the early access, I removed the video from Dad's Gaming Addiction from the Steam Hub out of fear. I understand it wasn't a good idea. This censorship has not been well received and I agree with that. All criticism is good to take and I should have listened to it rather than reacted badly. I apologize to the entire community. I thank Sid Alpha for his discussion and advice. I wish Hell of Men Blood Brothers would become a good game. I want to build a community and I need to be more fair and open-minded. If you have any ideas or suggestions, I invite you to share them to improve Hell of Men. I understood that the price was not fair either. The new price is waiting for validation by Steam. I hope Hell of Men will become a game you will enjoy spending time on. And to his credit, while he didn't apparently agree with my $5 recommendation, he did indeed lower the price from $12 to $8. During those discussions in November of last year, I stated that I would be keeping an eye on things as this developer, as I said, had made an impression with me that he was open to learning and growing from the experience, and keep an eye on things I have. A month and a half later, in late December of 2019, I posted the following to the discussions page for the game titled Kudos. I just wanted to post and say, as per my promise, I have been keeping tabs on the development of this game since the release of my video, and I'm glad the developer has been sticking with it. I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to release a new video citing a redemption story. Until then, keep up the good work. But that was seven months ago, so why wait so long? Well, there was a very good reason for that. Sometimes a person will say and do whatever they can to try and cover up an ill-advised decision. People that do that aren't actually open to improving or modifying their behavior and are simply waiting for someone's back to be turned before continuing on as they did before, and I wanted to make certain that's not what was happening here. A little bit of a situation where I adopted the mentality of trust but verify. And so what has the developer of the game been doing in all of those months? Uh, to put it bluntly, he's been busy making good on all of his promises. He's been open and accepting of critique. He has continued to update and work on his game with extreme regularity, making numerous improvements along the way, and like I said, he did lower the price of his game a bit. Not as far as I myself would have liked to see, mind you, but that decision is ultimately up to him. On top of that, he also took it upon himself to release a free playable demo for his game, something that I don't actually recall suggesting to him, but it is a strong pro-consumer move and one that I was pleasantly surprised by. And the state of the game now? Well, as I said, it is vastly improved. The UI is much better and far more intuitive. Controls are roughly the same, but with fewer glitches. There are less pathing errors, and the game itself is vastly superior than where it was originally. In all honesty, the state of the game itself as it is now is where it should have been when it was first launched into Early Access. And I feel that is a problem with a great many Early Access games and the thoughts and hopes that game developers place on the Early Access program. Now, many indie developers, and I feel Wacky Squad Studios no exception to this, see Early Access as a path forward to fund the entirety of their game development, which, to be blunt, is not a wise course of action to take. 
You see, when you launch a game in early access, yes, people buy those games with the clear expectation that it is unfinished but still playable. Many game developers take that to mean that it's fine as long as the game actually functions, and that mentality, that misguided expectation can, will, and has led to the demise of a great many early access titles. Gamers know when they purchase the game that it will change, that it will have issues, that there will sometimes be game-breaking bugs, but overall, the gamers will still have an expectation that the game be enjoyable. And it's because of this very clear difference in expectation over early access that we saw not only with this game but with so many others that I would like to point out that if the developer had waited until now to release his game, he would have fared far better. Sure, the game still has problems, it still has issues, and the game still has a long way to go. But for a sub $10 game as it currently stands, I really wouldn't mind playing it as an early access title. Whereas before, at the higher price point and far earlier in its development, I honestly felt that it was a bit insulting to be presented with such a game for that level of price. You know, in my genuine opinion, it's still not there yet in terms of quality, but it is such a dramatic improvement that the developer's earnestness in his discussions with me in November and his continued work shows to me an indie developer with genuine passion for what it is that he is creating. And yes, he made a mistake and censored critique in order to protect his sales. However, I refuse to live in a world and work in an industry where mistakes cannot be learned from, corrected, and then forgiven. Yes, he did something extremely stupid, and he took it on the chin for his actions and continued to strive to learn, to grow, and to improve his game, and it is a night and day difference. One single mistake such as censoring a review out of panic should not be enough to condemn a man for all time. Everyone should be deserving of an opportunity to rise above, and that is what I have been seeing with Wacky Squad Studio. A person that behaves in such a manner is someone deserving of respect, and of at the very least, a second chance at a first impression. And he has opened the door to that very thing in the hopes that people will come take a look at his game that he is so clearly passionate about. He has posted a free demo. You don't have to buy the game merely based on my word or anyone else's, you can go try it for yourself and make your own determination. And while I would feel no reservation at all recommending the game now at $5, at the $8 price tag I am teetering on the fence about it. Maybe in another few months time the game will continue to improve to the point where I will feel the same way about it at its current asking price. But that's the beauty of it. I don't have to recommend you go buy it and try it for yourself, just go try it. And if you think it's worthwhile, then yeah, definitely consider giving it a buy. And by all means, let the guy know your thoughts on the different mechanics and what you like and what can be improved upon. For all of his hard work and his determination, I feel that Hell of Men Blood Brothers is deserving of that second chance, and as such, I will be changing my Steam review to a positive one, and I hope that this video will help clear out the last vestiges of the developer's mistake that he has already learned from and corrected. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.